Okay, hopefully this is a better angle for what I want to illustrate. When you put a canvas on an antique window, this window is from 1905 from a country home and it is a single pane glass. It's extremely fragile and also there is I believe on the other side the the ceiling the caulking was not as done as well so there is a little small gap between the e edge of the glass and where it should be where it should slide into the frame it's okay because there's enough um, I know there's a proper term for it but there's enough caulking around it to hold it all that one little thing doesn't matter you can't see it um, I did notice it though when I was scraping and cleaning up the glass. So, what you do not want to do is put the canvas directly onto the frame. Because this is painted, even if it's sealed, uh, what you're going to run into is if the canvas is ever removed, it will most likely pick up the paint off of this frame regardless if it's a dry climate versus a humid climate it really doesn't matter so to fix to resolve that issue what I've created here are flats now you could go to uh, your local hardware store and buy uh, a kind of thing to the dimensions they would be. But you know, they're slats. They're about that wide and probably four or five millimeters thick. But that's really too thick for what I wanted. So luckily having a shop, I ran a uh, one by six through the table saw and I created two different widths. I've actually picked up two of the same ones. Okay. So, what we're, what we're going to do, we're going to take a very fine width one here. This is 1 8 inch or 2 millimeters. And we're going to place this down onto the frame itself. And we will tack this down and we'll do this on all four sides. And then we're going to come back with a, I believe this was a three-quarter inch or three-quarter inch, three-sixteenths of an inch, so three millimeters, about. And so this one being a little bit thicker will be placed on top. But first, what we're going to do here, we'll have this two millimeter uh, slat on the frame. We'll tack this down and we'll put the canvas on this and then we will take this three millimeter strip and we'll place this on top of the canvas and re-tack this down. This will help hold it and it will keep, help keep the canvas taut and then we will take the excess of the canvas and we will wrap it back over and then we'll figure out in that step I'll show you how we'll secure it there. Because you don't want too much bulge of material between the window frame and the wall. I mean, the window frame, in essence, you're thinking it should be mounted inside the wall, but since this is not going to be, since we're not going to open up the wall and create a cavity to set this window frame into, we do want to minimize the amount of space between the window frame and the wall. We really don't want a floating canvas. So, what, so I'm mounting it. For, luckily, for me, I have the convenience of an air gun or an air nailer. Uh, wonderful. It's extremely quiet. Well, it's a little loud, but I've heard worse. It's fast, it's clean, 
this also gives me a depth control where I can adjust and control exactly how much of the head I want above the wood I'm nailing or below it. Or, and so I found that really convenient. And I, let's see here, as you can see, I've tried a dozen times or so and trying to adjust the amount of pressure. And I finally got it exactly where it was just slightly below the surface. So that's really perfect. Now, uh, I tested this on another pair, uh, another frame from the same year, and it had some broken glass, so it didn't matter if I, bro I broke it. It worked fine. It did not rattle the glass. The reason I used the air nailer was because I was concerned that the vibration of using a hammer and regular finish nails, come on, focus. Well, this doesn't want to focus, but you can see what I mean. They're really just simple finish nails. So I was really concerned about using a hammer on this wood because creating the vibrations with this very fragile glass, I didn't want to shatter the glass because I'll show you just how fragile it is. This is another frame I was working on, and I have this tape right now so that it doesn't uh, blow out any further. But I'll tell you what I broke it with. I broke it with this simple dust brush. When I was brushing, the side of this hard plastic accidentally tapped the glass, and it exploded. I mean, it did not hit very hard. that back over there. So yeah, um, I was a bit intimidated or apprehensive, I should say, to use a hammer. However, on the other um, glass window, I found out it really was okay. Yes, um, so it worked, it worked fine. I still would be very, very, very careful very careful about using a hammer. And this is antique glass, very thin glass. If you're going to do it, if you cannot, if you do not have access to an air nailer and a compressor, uh, consider pre-drilling consider pre the holes with a, a drill bit that's slightly smaller than the nail maybe even half the width of the nail. Um, you're, get, you're getting into some really dangerous area. I mean, this glass is fragile. All it takes is one tap, as you saw with that other window. It exploded in nine or ten different directions. As soon as I heard it, before my eyes could even grasp what it was, there was already nine or ten cracks instantly. There was no stopping, it was done. So I, I can fix that for another particular art piece. I'll just throw in some uh, liquid glass glue and it'll dry clear. And for a particular art piece I have in mind, that will not be a problem. But a big piece like this, how often do you come by a window this size, this antiquated? So you really want to be careful. So I'm going to stop the video there. I'm going to prep this and we'll come back and I'll show you the next step I'm going to go for. Okay, I'm back. Made some progress. I got everything. I got the um, two millimeter strips of wood tacked down and I uh, made some comment about that. I chose to place them a one quarter inch, about almost five millimeters, from the edge closest to the glass. Because if, um, if they were any closer, you would be able to see 
the mounting surface from the face or from the other side looking in. And you really don't want that. Uh, you don't want to place them too far back because then if there's any um, slack in the canvas, then it will begin to rub up against the frame. And that's not going to damage the canvas in that regard necessarily, but it's going to look really sloppy to have sag. Um, so quarter inch all the way around was good for me. However, I could still see when if I looked um, almost from a sheer angle, I still could see uh, my molding strips. So I figured out how to fix that because they were raw wood. As you can see here, um, I think I'm going to zoom in for you on this. This is raw wood, unpainted. Because you remember, I said earlier, you don't want to put canvas, painted canvas, directly on a painted surface in this regard, uh, just to keep from picking up any of the other paint. So I'm using raw wood. However, I'm using this blue tape to tape down and. Uh, let me zoom in here real quick for you. Whoa. Okay. Sorry about the lighting. Um, but perhaps you can see turn this light off. Perhaps that will allow you to see the raw wood versus the painted. And so then what I did with uh, regular blue painter's tape, taped here exactly to the edge. Um, just grabbed a regular small, any paintbrush will do. and just painted the, the face of it, or the edge of it. And that's really all that needs to be done. Um, I went ahead, prior to the cutting this video, and painted everything else so you don't have to watch me unnecessarily paint this thing. And now that that's done, I can pull this off because it's just on that one side, so I, and I'm pulling away. Um, I'm now zoomed out so far. Let me zoom. Zoom. Oh, shoot. It's all good. It's all good. Zoom back out. There you go. Give me one moment. Okay, so um, as I just painted all of that, I then pulled this all up, and I can see if I painted any of the paint got over to on top of this. Now, when you pull this, pull back away from it. Don't pull this way. Pull away from the paint. You can do this while it's wet. This all this paint still wet, but it doesn't matter because the wet paint is only on this side. Get the rest of this out. Okay. So now, we're back to where we started. Almost. The slats are tacked down. Um, two on the end, one in the middle. And so a total of five on all the pieces. And I started tacking the ends first. And if there's any bow um, in the wood, that's when you, this wood is so thin, you can just push it forward with your thumb, keeping the same distance, tack that, and then finish it off with this just to keep everything flush. So this is still wet, but it's not a problem. 
I use the paint I've been using. Um, you can buy expensive art paint, or you go down to your local hardware store and buy. Now this is really some premium quality paint by Bear, and you don't have to buy the highest grade paint. Um, oftentimes I'll use Color Place, I'll use Glidden, both of them. They're reasonable quality for the. Um, being a mixed media, the type of art that I do, this is absolutely, house paint is absolutely sufficient. Um, this is why I'm into acrylics, because uh, if, I, if I need the texture of oil, I can always throw a gel medium in there. It's wonderful, it's easy to, it's easy to clean up. Now this is 100% acrylic latex, and it is kitchen and bath, so therefore it's going to have a, a sheen to it. So it's going to be a, not high gloss, but it's going to have a semi-gloss. And I really wanted that for this because obviously um, it's pretty common to find windows, window panes, window seals to have a semi-gloss um, look to them. So to continue with the approach to the arts, to keep the realism, of the window, not merely as a picture frame, but also as an actual window, I needed to keep that for continuity as per sake. Um, okay, so we need to let, luckily about house paint, you got 20, 30 minute dry time depending on the temperature. Uh, according to this thermometer, it's currently, oh man, 78 in here, about 25, 26 degrees Celsius and only 40% humidity, so it's pretty dry. So I would say in 20 minutes, these will be dry and I won't have to worry about them anymore. If I want to speed up the process, I could use a uh, hair dryer. Don't place it too close, just, you know, al maybe almost 30 centimeters apart, or uh, 30 centimeters from here, because all you want to do is add heat to it and let it dry on its own. You don't want to force the um, chemicals to dry too quick. Uh, that's never good for anything. Um, so we're going to cut stop the video here. I'm going to let this dry, and we'll come back, and I'll show you how I'm going to put the canvas on and retack the new stuff. And we're uh, making good progress. So hold on. <laughs> 